Hello everyone, this is Matt Hoots with Sawhorse and for the 1920s house we're going to use a product called Rockwell for all the insulation. Now in this house, because it is a passive house, we're going to insulate towards the outside. So the main product that we're going to use on this house is the Comfort Board 80. Now we've ordered panels that, this is a, this is a sample size that shows two inches thick, but we're actually going to use a four inch thick product. This goes on the outside of the house, we're sticking a double layer on the walls. Also, when we stick a triple layer on the roof, we're going to up to 12 inches on the roof line. Now, what this does is it essentially provides a, is we're creating a, what they call a Yeti cooler effect all the way around the house. We have continuous insulation on the outside of the house, walls, roof, and underneath the slab in the foundation. Now, this is very tricky because you have some awkward transition points. We've got some details that have been created by LG Squared specifically specifically for this. Now insulation, this is around, let's just say is around approximately uh, R value of four per inch. Now this is two inches, so it's around the R value of eight. Now you can take a, a, a stud, it's an R value of one per inch approximately. So if you have a four inch wall or three and a half inch wall, you're looking at an R value of three and a half where in that same wall you have over 12 or 13 or 14 with the insulation. So where you have those breaks in the studs, even though it does provide some thermal resistance, it's not the same as the insulation. So if you take an infrared camera, you're able to see that those studs actually are leaking energy from the house or you're absorbing energy into the house depending on what time of the year it is. So in the south, if it's really hot outside, you basically have energy coming from the sun through the siding, um, conduction into your house through the studs and also in the winter time you have energy coming out of your house because you're heating and it's going through the studs through your roof line now i've done some studies on my roof line and I, i've seen that even though i have a continuous insulation of spray from my roof line i was really surprised that i still have thermal bridging even though we sprayed over the rafters so really the best option that i, that I should have done is had insulation on top of the decking and then the roof just like we are going to do in the 1920s house. And if I take an infrared uh, camera to that, I'm not gonna see any thermal bid bridging with this product because this is gonna stop all of the, ins uh, all of the heat loss uh, through the roof line. Rockwell has, also has another product that we're gonna use, it's called the Safe and Sound. Now, I've been using this for decades now, and this is a great product for soundproofing, and it's also a great product for fire resistance. Not only recently did I consider using this as an insulation because it just wasn't really popular in this market because spray foam was taking over. Really considering this over spray foam because spray foam has lots of harmful chemicals in it. You can have potential off-gassing over time and also you're basically creating chemistry on the site and if you don't have the proper chemistry, the right humidity conditions and also the right temperature, you can have long-term off-gassing or just doesn't install very well. Spray foam needs something solid to spray to. So if you have the rigid comfort board, where again, this goes on the outside of the house. I just need sheathing. This attaches to the sheathing. Uh, I don't have to worry about water. I don't have to worry about compression because this is, uh, water can travel through this if it wants to, but it dries out really quickly. And you don't have to worry about long-term effects with, with this insulation. Now the safe and sound is a little bit different. Now this is something that I got at Home Depot. This is available in most big box stores where the safe and sound is about three and a half inches. This is designed, uh, this is a small sample size, but this is designed to put in a two by four wall. Now this is something that I use on most of my job sites, um, mainly if I'm looking to reduce sound in between the different areas. Uh, they also have something that's a little bit thicker. They've come out with a six inch safe and sound. That's something that I believe they released last year and which just provides uh, greater insulation properties, especially for sound if you have a two by six wall. So I'm going to use the six inch safe and sound in my basement, basically to stop the noise coming from the upstairs into the basement, because my office is in the basement. Plus we just, we also make noise in the basement when my sons play saxophone, keyboard, drums, to stop the, the sound from going upstairs, or as one of the methods we're gonna to use to stop the sound from going upstairs. So unlike the Comfort Board 80, the safe and sound is flexible. You can see that can be moved around. It's also easier to cut and easier to work with. Um, this comes pre-cut to fit between most common widths of studs. So if you're looking at either putting 16 on center or 24 inch on center, um, excellent for insulation. If you want to insulate your whole house with this, or if you're just looking to do sound insulation, this is a great product as well. Now what's nice about this over 
using spray foam or even bat insulation is this basically this shape that you put it in is going to stay that way forever so say if there's a rain event or there's a water leak or something and this gets wet it dries out and maintains its shape unlike some of these other insulations so if you have a fiberglass insulation it gets wet if you pull it out it's basically compressed you have a loss of thermal resistance, the R value is down, and it's not good over, over the years. I'm also talking a lot of my clients into using this, especially if they have the rental properties, and if they wanna ma maintain their investment. This uh, essentially is used for fire blocking, and uh, which also means that it's fire resistant. So wood burns at a much less temperature than this will melt. So this will help protect your house in case there is a fire from spreading. So this is used for sound insulation, thermal resistance and also fire resistance within the house. It's a very versatile product and it maintains its value through the, the full life of the product. I've heard of some people that have pulled this out after it's been in a wall for 30 or 40 years, reuse this somewhere else and you wouldn't dare do that with spray foam insulation or fiberglass bat insulation because as soon as you pull out, it loses its shape, you can't use it again. Uh, Rockwell, you can also recycle this. This is made out of the salt and recycled steel slag. So it's already made out of recycled content and you can take this, work it back into the process and it can become a new product if you decide not to reuse the product. Now the main difference between the Safe and Sound and the Comfort Board products are compression strength. The Safe and Sound, it's counting on the studs to basically pressure fit in between the studs to hold a shape. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration here showing you that, again, this is going to compress. So you want to cut this to basically fit in between the studs and you know this is not made to hold up the structure and it's not made to have any compression strength now the comfort board products are a little bit different this is designed to be on the underneath the siding so it needs to have some strength to be able to hold the siding up and it's also designed to be underneath the slabs if you have non-load bearing walls in, in those areas so same product, you saw how a weight, a 25 pound weight reacted um, with the comfort board, basically compressed it. Now if you look at, I'm gonna drop this, and you can see that basically this product isn't moving at all. I've also seen some demonstrations where cars are run over this, and again, nothing happened to the product. Now when you pour concrete over this, um, it immediately conforms and you don't have to worry about and moving over time. So that's another great thing about this product. It's very stable, it's very resilient, and um, in this case, it's designed to be very strong and have a, a high PSF for underneath concrete and underneath your roof. Thanks again for watching this video, and thanks to products like these, we're able to build even more efficient houses, especially as more and more states and municipalities are adopting net zero energy codes and uh, recommendations. Products like these enable us to make the house more energy efficient, more resilient, therefore we can reduce our energy independence um, on the grid, and also in case there's a storm, if you're not losing as much energy, which is very important, lots of storms coming through, either snows or hurricanes, your power goes out, you're not gonna need as much power to basically maintain the house and keep the occupants comfortable if you have good insulation in the house and a good air sealing in the house, and that's what these products help provide. While editing this video, I noticed in another video that I got a comment about not wearing gloves when I was handling this, and they are absolutely correct. You want to make sure that you're wearing gloves when handling any type of insulation. Um, I say any type of building material. I'm actually usually wearing gloves at all times, especially when you're cutting this product. You want to make sure that you are wearing a mask. And again, same with uh, wood. I don't make cuts on my chop saw and other products because I don't want those particulates in my lungs. So make sure that you wear the proper protective gear based on the activity that you're doing, especially during construction, demolition, make sure that you're protecting yourself and others.